Hi there and welcome to Bustanet. Yes, it's time for another Getting Started with series. This time we're heading to IX. It's a club I've got a very big soft spot for. Uh, IX is one of those clubs that have got a really strong history behind them. And we want to try and see whether we can do a training safe with IX as well. It's because I want to develop players from, from the academy and I'm going to turn this into a kind of a training safe as well. So... Lots of things planned for Ajax, um, you know, of course, without a single doubt, you know, we want to see them lift the Champions League. I want to thank uh, One Football Lab for sponsoring the show. Uh, they're sponsoring all the shows for this month. And uh, if you want to get more information on the app, please head on down. Uh, check the links below. It's a fantastic app. It's got lots of information on clubs, videos that you can watch. It's, a, it's certainly a go-to for me at the moment. So... Meanwhile, back here with IX, there's certain things that you should bear in mind when you go to IX. <laughs> no stuff. You got no stuff. The first time I went into this, I thought it was, it was a bug, but I think it's intentional. I'm not going to go into why this is the case, but what you need to do is you need to go out there, find yourself some coaches, find yourself some scouts. You need at least four scouts. I mean, by my reckoning, you're going to have two scouts that are going to be running around preparing for your your next opposition you definitely need a few other scouts you know because if you're going to be in the champions league then you need one scout to be scouting the champions league and then you're going to have to be scouting um talents that you probably will need and all this is a function of a scouting budget i'll get to that a bit later you definitely need medical staff days if you don't have any medical staff chances are you're going to have you may not have, be able to carry on with the game for very long, so I suggest going going out there, getting yourself head of sports science, some physio, some sports science. They just fill up the roster. Yeah, this is just a game. Um, well, before I proceed, I'm going to go and get all that done and join you in a sec. When you get into your club, I mean, uh, immediately after you do that, assuming your season starts on the 3rd of July like, or the 1st of July like mine did, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to immediately set up your training. So we've gone in, we set, we don't want to complicate things too much. So we've gone with balanced and we've gone with high so that the workload for my players is going to be ideal. We're also not going to give them any more rest days. This should be enough and we're going to be focusing on match tactics. I haven't even really created any match tactics, but that's what I want my players to do. Meanwhile, uh, we're going to be out there looking for stuff. But if you look at the schedule, there's not very much time. You're going to have a few friendly matches. Uh, and then you're going to have your Champions League uh, um, playoff matches that begin then. Then you've got about another few more days. Like, you know, from the 2nd to the 12th, you've, you've got a few more days before your first game of the season against Heraklis. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm going to have to get a lot of help pronouncing Dutch names on the show. We've got a team report in here. Uh, you're going to have to know how your boys stack up against uh, the rest of the league. If you watch enough of my shows, you probably know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to focus on the main things. Now, as far as the whole league is concerned, we play the best 13. So should that be enough? If I want to go for the Champions League, 13 isn't the average I have to beat. 15 is the average I have to beat. So what do we do? So what we can do right now is we know that for the rest of uh, the rest of uh, at home, we're okay with 13 for positioning, but in Europe, we'll need 15. Then jumping reach, we also need about 15 to 16 in, uh, in, um, in Europe. So we know that we our defenders, well, most of the defenders are okay. I mean, Yol, Yol Weltman, uh, this player, he's very injury prone. And this, I know, I mean, this is basically from what he is like in real life. And that's the only way I can compare him. Like Vajiva, uh, his positioning is 14. Uh, jumping reach is 12. He, you know, he might, he's a decent fullback. But uh, in terms of his acceleration, is not that fantastic. We've got Maximilian uh, Werber, uh, 14 for positioning. Jumping reach again, 14. Okay in the league, but not fantastic in Europe. Now, here we got another one, Matthias the Light. Matthias the Light, I think. Uh, 13 for positioning. Okay anticipation, 13, 12. Again, uh, in Europe, he'll, he might struggle against some of the better teams. 15, acceleration, not that fantastic. A bit slow. Louis Oriella uh, is the wing back. He's a first team player positioning then we're looking at his uh you know his ability to go get up the pitch acceleration 14 
Well, he's okay, half decent, passing 14. If I'm looking at the rest of his attributes, I'm looking here, I'm going, okay, he's crossing 13. He's like, okay, we need to play him in every single game because he looks like a half decent attacking fullback. But look at his tackling, 11. Look at his positioning, 12. I mean, if he comes up against any top class uh, Champions League teams uh, with players like if if we end up playing Manchester United in the knockout stages of the uh, Champions League, we can just kiss our chances goodbye because I, I know this flank won't be good. So we got Michel Dykes uh, and uh, he is 13. Okay, he's not that bad. He's more defensively orientated. Then we got D Daly Sinkraven. Um, well, again, now we have a we have somebody who's an attacking midfielder who plays in a multiple uh, roles, but his defensively, we know we can't depend on him defensively. His positioning is seven. The only thing we can use him for is an at from an attacking point of view, and even from an attacking point of view, he's okay. He's he may be good in he may be good uh, in Holland, but his decision making is twelve. Vision is thirteen. Flair is about fourteen. So he's like and his strength is 8 so he's okay I mean we, he's 22 years old we really need to develop these players these players have to be trained up you know maybe in a couple of years time if I can hang on to them they'll be worth keeping so defensively we look okay uh, then what about defensive midfielders now if you want to play any kind of a system you know you, you can't just depend on your midfielder your defenders do all the tackling ideally when you screen your midfield screen to be doing all the work so here when i'm looking at my midfield screen and i'm looking at my defensive players i got matthias delight he's one okay positioning is 13 is all right off the ball he brings something to the attack anticipation 12 concentration 13 this is, okay he's very average right he's there's nothing we don't need to we're not going to shout you know at the top of our lungs go oh he's fantastic here we got lasa scone uh okay he's 31 years old but he's slow um he can't last the full game he is an he, he he's a lock picker you know he will unlock help you unlock defenses but he was we can't really expect him to come back and defend uh then uh if you're looking through the ranks we've got donny van der beek he almost needs to start every single game but look at his uh, positioning his positioning is only 10 and his tackling is only 11 again we have a problem you see the problem now we have in midfield is that None of our central midfielders are ball winners. Not one of them. Maybe Nick Vajiva. Oh my goodness, I need to pronounce these names correctly. I do apologize if I'm not getting them right. He is a pretty good defensive midfielder, but he's rated as a defender, left and center. So he might be playing at the back. Um, that's it. You know, The one critical thing that, um, that these boys need here in Ajax are two defensive midfielders, maybe even three. So we got Donny van der Beek, but we need two more. If we are to compete in Europe, because the rest of the players, Matthias Delight is a central defender, we can push him to midfield. That's an option that we can take. He's 17 years old. He's going to be playing literally every single match. We can't afford to sell him off. At the age of 17, this guy is going to be like a... Fun He's like a phenom. <laughs> okay. Uh, then... This is the problem that we have right now. Who the hell do we play in the uh, in the uh, in midfield? But we need players like Nick Vajiva in defense. We got Joel Joel Veltman. He's a he's like a, he can play as a fullback, but he also can play as a central defender. Then finally, we have this one fundamental problem. We need to find somebody who can be a central defender who can jump and hit away dangers. And who do we have? Matthias Delight. That's it. Fifteen jumping reach, heading fourteen. He's going to have, one of them is going to be at the back. Then we've got uh, Joel Veltman, 14-14, and that's it. You know, we, we don't have many players who can play in that role. So, it looks like uh, we need a we need a defensive midfielder. Then we look at the B team. Do we have options at the B team? I know that we have Carrell, I think, here. So, he's a bit slow. Acceleration is a bit nine. He's the uh, only other option here. We've got Zian Fleming, not that good. Um... Uh, so this this brings us to the first fundamental problem that this this team has. Uh, we need to first move this guy into the senior squad, gives us some options. Then we need to also scout for a defensive midfielder. How do you do that? There are two ways. There's one very simple way we can do that. First, I'll just go in here and I'll load one of my tactics. Let's look at what we have in the team. Of course, we're using the B team's manager's assessment of the players. I really need a better assistant manager in the club. But this will give us a 
br bit of a rundown of what we have. Okay, defensive midfielders, Lassa Skone, Donny Van Der Beek, Matthias De Light, Nick Vajiva. Nick Vajiva, Yo Veltman, Yo Veltman, Yo Veltman, Matthias De Light. There's a crossover here. So it's very apparent that we need to go and get defensive midfielders if we want. We want to because we we might have an issue in the def in defensive in defensive midfield. Now, what if I ch opted to go with a slightly more attacking tactic like this? If I go with a slightly more attacking tactic like this, we still have the same problem. Ziyech can play some Mazala over here, uh, but still defend the beak, and we still need one defensive midfielder here. We got Hakim Ziyech who can play here. Kasper Dolberg, I mean Younes, David Neres. Okay, fine. In attack. We're probably going to swing between Hakim Ziyech, Dolberg, uh, or, or we can have Lassa Skone punching through here, La, ha, uh, Hakim Ziyech, Kasper Dolberg, and then we've got David Neres. Mm, not many options here as well. Then finally, we have another tactic that I could be using, is, which is like a simple 4 3 3. Again, here, ball winning midfielder, Donny Van Der Beek. In the middle, we'll need a deep line playmaker. Uh, options there we got no curry relos then up top up top we might be okay with klaus huntala up there and with casper do work then we have some options we can definitely feel three players here of course hakim ziyad won't be able to play in the system which is a bit of a bummer then we'll have to you know we can change it to a 4-3-1-2 easily so straight away when i'm looking at this team the immediate my immediate assessment of this team is tactically we are going to have to go out there and get a defensive midfielder. If I go to my ass man and say, okay, ass man, what do you think? Can you help me out over here? Ass man goes out, comes back with these options. ZX, Sinkraven, Skone, Van Der Beek, Vajiva, Delight, Veltman, Dykes, Huntala and Dolberg. We are in serious trouble because Skone can't tackle. ZX can't tackle. Only when the beak can tackle, and we got Sinkrava. So basically, all three, all three of these players can't tackle. So we're looking at the, if I'm looking at this position, uh, if I'm looking at this position and looking for other options here, we got, we, if we don't have any, very, very many options, we can push Carol, I think, here, and that's it. So, Ajax need defensive midfielders. You need to go out there and you need to hunt for defensive midfielders, which is what I'm going to do. With Ajax, if Ajax is to be successful this season, they've got to strengthen their midfield. Once you get your scouting team with Ajax, then you need to start set up a scouting focus. Here we set up a scouting focus for a defensive midfielder uh, between the ages of 15 and 29. Second thing you probably will need to do is to create a filter. Go to the player search database, look for a defensive midfielder. We've gotten some attributes like determination, work rate, and bravery. Ages between 15 to 31, value, 5 million, nationality, Italian. Yeah, are my favorites. Then you're going to pop up some players and then you need to start adding them to your shortlist. Finally, you need to remember that you only have a transfer budget of 13 million, but you got to knock, you got to understand that your wage budget is you're a bit above the wage budget. So you need to actually reduce the transfer budget, expand the wage budget so that you can bring more players in. And then you got to think of the long term as well. So you can't really go out there and get players who are going to be very expensive. You also have to think about uh, financial, financially growing this club so that you can, you know, you, you want to have that, that bedrock right now. What I'm doing is I'm creating the base for the success first. Then I can bring other players into the team from the youth. I can start developing them and adding them to the main team as well. So I'm giving myself a buffer so that we can get some good results, get some depth into the team and also start looking at the youngsters from the under the B team as well as the under 19 team to start looking and getting into the first team. Players like Zian Fleming, they're going to have to start. They, they're all going to get a chance to play. Dami, Damil Dankel Louis. If they don't get a chance to play for me here, they have to go on loan because Damil Dankel Louis it looks like a very excellent prospect for an attacking wing back or a complete wing back. So we're going to have to train him as well. So the long term plan has to be to, to get uh, enough players in locking down your you, the, the important positions in the in the team like the defensive midfielder positions so once you get them and the, for the other players you got to send them out on loan or at least give them a chance in your first team because you've got some very very talented youngsters in the team that should be given a chance to play 
But right now with this team, we don't have enough defensive midfielders for Champions League competition, which means that these players will be brought into games that we're playing in the league. And then we're also going to be loaning them, uh, some of these players out to other clubs around the region. Well, I, as far as tactics are concerned, then we have a team right now that can play several tactics and I'm going to be using all these tactics in preseason without any play instructions with very minimal team instructions for me to get used to this team. So with a, we're going to be looking at a 4-1-3-2, very basic 4-1-3-2. We've got a 4-1-2-2. 4-1-2-3 like this as well, which has got no PIs and TIs, played on standard and flexible. Finally, we've got a 4-3-1-2. Because this team has the players to play this kind of a system, the only thing we need to fix is the defensive midfielder situation in IX. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Getting Started with IX. Uh, there's going to be a whole series on IX coming very soon. If you have any questions, you're going to find me on Twitter at Bustanet or addicted to fm.com, my website. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone out there for supporting the channel you make these kind of shows possible for the rest of the community you guys take care have a good one i'll catch up with you soon bye bye